Uh, welcome everybody to the next part over here. We'll be seeing what XPaths are. How do you work with XPaths? Okay, so we are also building simple scripts in Selenium. We built a script over here as well in the second part. Right now, let's look at what XPaths are. Fine. Now everybody has a name. I'll take a very simple example. Everybody has a name. Right, that every person is identified by a certain name. Similarly, every element on a web page will always have a certain X path. That X path will make the, uh, you can say, recognize, recognition of the element very easy. Right. Now, how do you work with X paths? How do you calculate X paths? What X paths are actually? Let's see that. Right. Let me take this simple example of Gmail page itself. Okay. We were able to identify this text field over here because it had an ID, it had a name, it had everything. Right. But as I told you, if you talk about a text like this, one account, all of Google, if you look at this, then this is just a simple H1 tag. It will not have any ID, any name. So you cannot recognize it like this. So you will have to use XPath for it. Okay, to recognize this, you'll have to use XPath. Now, XPaths are of two types. One type of XPath is known as a complete XPath or an absolute XPath. The other type of XPath is known as a partial XPath. Okay, now what do you mean by complete XPath or a partial XPath? Okay, let's talk about that. Let's talk with the complete or absolute XPath. Fine, if you look at the page source, then on the web page, everything starts from the HTML tag. HTML tag is the root tag of the complete document. Inside it, you have got two tags, head and body. And inside the body tag, you actually have the complete page. Fine. Right. Over here, this H1 tag is inside the body tag. Okay. So, you can make a complete XPath starting from the HTML tag of the website. You write it something like this. That is, the starting tag is HTML. Inside the HTML tag, you have got two tags, head and body. You are interested in body because inside the body you have this text. Right. So, you write inside the HTML tag, there is a body tag. Inside the body tag, you have got this division tag. Okay, you want to go inside this division tag, right? Because then only you will reach the H1 tag. You have to keep on traversing like this till the time you reach the H1 tag. Inside this division tag, you have got three division tags. You want to go inside the second one because the H1 is lying somewhere inside the second division tag. Okay, right. So, you will write over here, div. Right, there are three divisions over here. All these three divisions are inside this division. All these three divisions are parallel to each other. Okay, you want to go inside the second one. Right, so that's why I wrote div2. Inside the second division, you have got again two divisions parallel to each other. Okay, so inside this division, you have got two divisions. You want to go inside the first one and then only you will get the H1 tag, right? So, you write over here slash div. If you don't give any number, by default it is 1. Or you can write 1 as well, but if you don't give anything, by default it will take it as 1 only. Fine. And inside it, you have the H1 tag. So, this is the complete or absolute X path for the heading. Okay, you can use this X path. You can go to the code, right? You can write over here, driver dot find element. This is the code from the previous example which we were doing. Okay, right. By the X path of the email ID field. Okay, dot so, no, not the email ID field for the text. Okay. Right. Driver dot find element. Find this element dot. You can write get text. You can use the get text function. 
get text oh, hold on this slash has to be the other one just dot get text the slash has to be the other one right so get text and you write over here text is this and you print the text look you don't calculate the complete text parts like this there are tools for calculating okay i'll tell you right when you run this code you will see that gmail yeah you see that the browser launches fine it gets maximized and it will go to gmail and you see the output you will get the text this text has been retrieved from the get text function on the web element and you can get the text like this right so this is how you can use the complete text path now you don't have to create the complete text path yourself every time that is not there okay you have you can take help of tools right uh, on the top of firebug you can install a tool known as firepath i already have installed it okay you can go to google and type firepath firebug okay make sure that firebug is installed in mozilla firepath is a plugin which gets installed on top of firebug so you go to the first link over here and you click on the link add to firefox you click on this button fine so when you click on it your it will get added mozilla will restart and after restarting you will get the firepath option over here okay inside this firepath option you'll have the option generate absolute xpath you check on that fine and now wherever you will move the mouse on the page you will get the absolute xpath of that element okay if i go to the gmail web page you if you look at the gmail web page you will if i look at this text field fine this is the absolute xpath of the text field okay right so you can get the absolute xpath for anything for this text over here which we had seen this is the absolute xpath okay now this has to be actually backslash so anyways look the thing is you cannot use this complete or absolute xpath every time okay you can you can never use this because the reason behind this is if anything changes in the web page and if that changes at the root level suppose after the body tag the developer adds the new tag in the very beginning okay right over here if the developer adds a new tag in the very beginning over here then my all the absolute x paths will go for a toss and i will have to change my complete code okay right so any change in the page structure can affect your absolute or complete x path in a adverse way and you might have to change the code and that's what that's not what we want we want to make a robust code and we want that even if the application changes the chances of changing the x path they should be less that is why we use the partial x path okay right although absolute expats they are very very accurate okay right if the application is not changing you can use the absolute expats that is not a problem right but if something changes you fall into trouble and that is why partial expats are preferred now a partial expats will always start from a double slash okay i'll give you an example double slash star this expats represents any element on the web page if i route uh, sorry if i write over here double slash a okay so this will represent all links on the page so double slash star to be very precise it can be written it represents all the elements on the web page double slash a means all the links on the web page double slash input means all the input tags on the web page okay 
right now in the firebug you can click on this drop down and you can uncheck the option generate absolute x path okay and now when you move the mouse over any element for example you move the mouse over this email id field it will give you an x, x path like this right it means that double slash star this means that out of all the elements on the web page okay get me the element whose id is email or you can be more precise you can give the tag name over here the tag name of this email id field is input you can write over here double slash input you can put anything right from all the input tags on the page get me the input tag whose id is email you can also mention it like this right okay now if you go to any other web page for example uh, i was here right on addons.mozilla.org if i look at this button add to firefox if i in or if i look at this okay this button is fine add to firefox then this add to firefox button comes up with this particular xpath now what happens is that how this partial xpath is made fine uh, hold on let me explain you like this it's a link now this link has got no id okay right so what firebug does is that it jumps one step above into this para tag this para tag has also got no id okay so what happens is that in the x path this is the link anchor tag this link is inside this para tag this becomes the para tag this para tag is inside this division so it traverses one point above as well this is that division this division has also got no id so it jumps one step above to this division and this is the division okay then to this division and this is the division so it keeps on traversing and finally it finds okay it finds an a division over here with the id add on so it starts building the x path from this particular division okay that is this is a division with the add on under that there is another division until the time it reaches the link so rather than building the x path from the root of the page it started the x path from the division which was having a id a unique locator okay so you can also use this type of x path a partial x path what if if it traverses above and it doesn't find any id anywhere by default then it will take the complete x path for example okay for example if you go back to gmail fine and if you look at make sure for partial x path you have this unchecked generate absolute x path okay right if you look at this text over here one account all of google we are getting the complete x path only for this okay although although we have unchecked the option for complete x path the reason behind this is that because between h1 tag over here and the html tag there is no tag with the id so it cannot start building x path from any tag okay right if you look at a simple website like yahoo.com right if i take the example of say the link over here movies link so it builds the x path like this okay it starts from some division with this id and it traverses down okay right so you can use partial x paths you can use complete x paths fine now there are few questions over here the first question is that what if element changes okay what if the element for whom you get for whom you get the x path it changes for example if you go to the website uh, bbc.com okay this is the news website the complete website changes every day okay this date will change every day so how do you recognize these look no matter whether the element changes or not the x path will remain the same if i check out the x path of say the text over here what you need to know about the best uh, country for expats right 
if if i look at this x path this is the x path now this x path will remain the same every day only this text will change so you don't have to worry okay the element can change but the x path will remain same but but yes if this text moves its location to somewhere else on the page and there is a change in the page structure then there is a high possibility that the x path will change but yes if everything remains the same the headlines if every day the headlines they are appearing at this location right then the x path will remain the same the headlines might vary so you don't have to worry okay right now the next question is what if x path changes how do you do that what i mean by this is that suppose we again go to yahoo.com okay and on yahoo.com website if i take example of this link again movies then in the x path you see that this is the id of the web page okay this is the x path i'll note the x path over here fine i'll close yahoo.com and i'll open the browser again right i'll go to yahoo.com and now i again check out the x path for movies just a minute yeah this is the x path now you see that this number is changing so there is a change in x path every time generally this is done to prevent automation tools but there are workarounds for this we will see that in the coming classes right if the element changes then it's fine but if the element moves it changes the location on the web page okay then it becomes a little difficult the x path x path might change but if the id of the element is changing or if something in the x path the property is changing then there are some internal functions and all which you have to use i will talk about them okay i'll talk about them in the coming classes so we'll also see how to build your own customized x paths and okay we will be seeing a lot of things but this was a just a general overview on what x paths are and how you can work with them right so we have made a simple script as well which is simply logging into gmail or trying to log in right over here instead of id you can also use x path to write inside the email id field you can write over here driver dot find element by the x path of the email id field dot send keys hello you can take down uh, this particular x path any one of them both of them anything any one will do okay and if you run it it will go and simply type hello inside the email id field now the next example which i'll take up is printing the names of all facebook friends all right so it goes and types hello inside the text field all right 